<laughs> Brother Shabir, shukran, it was very enlightening to, to listen to you. Uh, you've said, and I just want to ask, uh, because we're talking about atheists talking to me, and I have some very valid arguments now to put to the atheists. And you've said that maybe God allows pain and suffering, that you suffer here, and then in the hereafter you have a wonderful time. Now my atheist friend asked me, but what proof do you have that there is a life beyond this life? Thank you. Well, we should address that question from two angles. First of all, we should ask the atheist, what is the atheist answer to all of this suffering happening in the world? See? Okay, there's a suffering. A tsunami occurs. So what do we do? Okay, this is bad. It's terrible. The believer is looking at it. The atheist is looking at it. Okay, so start with the atheist. Okay, so what's your answer to all of this? He doesn't know what is, why it's happening. We're part of a blind system that coughs us up into a, in a big bang some 14 billion years ago, and eventually will swallow up us again in, in swallow us up again in, in a big crunch sometime in the future. So we're just part of a blind system that we cannot control. We're just victims of the system. That that's the reality. And the suffering is happening, and there's nothing really. We might be able to make some changes here and there, but this is all beyond our control and beyond anyone's control. It's just some cruel system uh, that has, in a way, created us. On the other hand, uh, the believer looks at it and says, okay, the suffering is there, it's real and it's bad, it's terrible, we feel for the suffering of the victims and so on. But there are ways of, of viewing that occasion uh, that gives us a sense of comfort, a sense of well-being, a, a sense that there is a creator who is, after all, loving and kind, and he has everything in his control. It may look bad now, but he has a good plan for the future. People may suffer now, but they'll get a reward in the life hereafter. Now, all of this is comforting, and I'm not saying invent the idea of God because it will feel so good to have the idea of God, but I'm saying that the idea of God now, in fact, does have some benefits. Whereas, on the other hand, the idea that there is no God doesn't really help anyone in any way. You're still left with the suffering. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, on, on the other hand, when we think about the life hereafter, there are good reasons for believing that uh, there is a life hereafter. Immanuel Kant spoke about what he called the categorical imperative. In the sense, similar to what we spoke, what, what we spoke about uh, under the heading, the moral uh, argument for the existence of God. Well, Immanuel Kant says that uh, we have a sense that we should do certain things because uh, th that is the right thing to do. But if we look at the cause and effect and, and if we look at cost-benefit uh, analysis, some of the things that we think we ought to do uh, do not make sense on that sort of analysis. It may, you may say, okay, I ought to do this thing. This is the right thing to do. I'm going to do it. But somebody may point out to you, brother, if you do that thing, you're going to lose in this way and that way and that way. And you say, no, I'm going to do it because that's the right thing to do. doesn't matter what I lose. I just have to do this. So you're responding to what Immanuel Kant refers to as the categorical imperative. This is what you should do regardless. But he says that that categorical imperative only makes sense on the view that there is a life hereafter. Because it means that your actions are not fully explainable given the constraints of this world. The cost-benefit analysis ultimately it does not end here, but it extends into the life hereafter. A person may think he can murder and get away with it, but the ultimate cost-benefit analysis says that he's going to pay for this in the life hereafter. So the categorical, the categorical imperative is that he should not do that. This is wrong. Why is it wrong? Because there is a life hereafter in which uh, it really it will, will um, be manifest that uh, this is not uh, the right thing to do. So our very actions, uh, whether we are believers or atheists, seem to subscribe to this very kind of, uh, of situation where it seems to be taken for granted that there is an evening of the score that will occur in a life to come. Uh, and of course, apart from that, uh, we do have the Quran which assures us that people will be resurrected from, from the dead. They think that they will be left alone and they will not be resurrected. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assures them that uh, in fact we will all be resurrected, brought back uh, to life even after we have uh, uh, disintegrated bodily, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect, uh, resurrect us finally for the judgment.